so promiscuously uh, followed in the period of the Romans. So this is a really important commentary. I leave it to your di discretion how you wish to use it. Well, why do they feel they have to write in code like this? Why can't they just say Romans? Hold on. Sorry that was so long-winded, Bill. Uh, no, that's okay. The reason was that when I was talking to our other colleague, and he cited here, and he said this proves it's written in the time of the of the uh, Greeks. These people don't know what they're talking about. I mean, this is just poor exegesis. But the public at large doesn't read these texts. They're afraid to read these texts. They don't feel capable of reading these texts. That's why I like to give them the text so that they can read it for themselves. Because the scholars have a very tendentious, agenda-ridden interpretation of these texts, and they depend on the fact that the people don't know what they're talking about. Yes. So it's like priests or clerics. They guide the people who are basically their flock in a blind type fashion, and the people defer to them saying, well, they must know more than I know. They come from Oxford. They come from uh, uh, the Hebrew University. They come from Harvard. Who am I to stand up uh, against them? Give them the text, like the old American fundamentals, uh, fundamentalists, take the Bible to the frontier, let each man be his own interpreter of um, scripture, and we'll do much, do much uh, better here. Uh, back, back to your thing about code. Yes, even if they had the text, uh, they don't have the knowledge of what those individual words mean. That's why they needed someone like Eisenman to tell them. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> as far as the code goes, I think the code is pretty simple. There are powerful, very repressive Saddam Hussein type forces that they are operating under, meaning a combination of the Erodian family, which is brutally repressive, and the Roman governors. So you say, well, how would that help them? Well, because at least it gives them some wiggle room. Since they don't identify any, uh, people by name, they can at least uh, say, well, we weren't talking about that. I mean, it might not help them in the end, but they can at least make that, make that uh, claim. People in the far distant past that they're using for, uh, they know their history as well as anyone else, that they're using for uh, uh, examples only, uh, they don't mind identifying overtly. But my explanation, it, it may be wrong, fear of powerful, you know, uh, governing forces that do not allow them to speak plainly, but they, among themselves, know exactly who they're, who they're talking about. It was the same during the Inquisition. Yeah. So no, that's clear. So the point here, to sum it up, sure. is, In this particular is it's passage. all a matter of timing and what they knew at the time and who they were referring to. Well, the point in the Dead Sea Scroll studies is chronology. We are arguing about chronology. The establishment consensus uh, uh, um, network wants to put this in the Maccabean period and put all of the antagonism against the Maccabean family for some unknown reason. I feel that historically doesn't make any sense. I think that internal data is the key. So the chronology here shows we are not in the Maccabean period, that is the period of the kings of Greece and the Seleucid uh, descendants of Alexander. We're in the Roman period. We're in the Kittim period. And now it's interesting enough that the seekers after the smoothing, that's another code. Why are they bringing it up? Because when Herod came to power, Herod's father under the Roman uh, uh, um, conquerors in 60, he was the intermediary of bringing Roman armies under Pompey into the country in 63 uh, BC. And then thereafter, Herod promoted Pharisees and took vengeance on all the supporters of the extreme nationalists and, and the Maccabeans. And repeatedly in this period, the Pharisee leaders, Hillel and Shammai and others, are always telling the people, open the gates to the Romans, open the gates to Herod, cooperate with the Romans, cooperate with the Herodians. This group is anti-Herodian, anti-Roman, anti-foreign power in every document, and therefore they call them the seekers after smooth things, which would include Paul, because Paul claims to be a Pharisee of, of the Pharisees, studying with the Pharisees, and he is another accommodator. He, he also uh, advocates cooperation with the power of um, um, uh, Rome. He goes even further than any, anyone else. In, in the letter to the Romans, he says, whoever opposes the ruling powers is bound to pay the ultimate price because God chose the ruling powers to put here on earth and you are opposing God, God's will and the wearing of, of its sword will be its own reward. Paul, Paul also says, that he applies the love commandment. He says, therefore, love your neighbor as yourself. Pay the taxes due to Rome. 
in the context of interpreting the most famous passage in, in um, uh, Scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, as the love commandment, he uses that in a most cynical way to say, pay taxes to the, to the ruling power, the very issue on which the, the rebels were opposing foreign power. And he knows that those rebels are prizing the righteousness commandment, love your neighbor as yourself, as one of the most valuable things. So he's always playing rhetorical games, using their own ideas against themselves in a quite a cynical manner. That's good. I don't know what you can get out of that. Yeah. I'm sorry to be so long-winded, but okay, no, no. these are complex thoughts, and Put it's it tough. Context. I apologize. Make a way in the wilderness, in the community rule. Wait a minute. The community rule is one of the, there are about four or five key Dead Sea Scroll documents. The Noam commentator, commenta uh, commentary is not so important just for that chronological uh, uh, issue and the opposition to uh, um, um, crucifixion, which was being indulged in so promiscuously by Roman power in the first century. And they show that, this, that they were against this and therefore to accuse the Jews of being for crucifixion in, in, in any way is totally contraindicated by the Dead Sea Scrolls. For instance, in another document, the Damascus document, they even say anyone who swears another to death by the laws of the, of the, of the Gentiles shall himself be executed. So they actually, they actually have a death ban on anyone who will turn someone else in and allow him to be condemned to death by, by uh, Roman law. That person has to or should be killed as far as they're concerned. It's in the Damascus document. So they're totally against all those things that we are so f familiar with as uh, uh, descriptive of so-called Jewish uh, behavior pattern in this period. Now the community rule is um, an organization document, which is why it's called that. It was one of the first documents found. It was found in Cave 1 in a perfect state of preservation. Since that time, we found uh, some eight or so other more fragmentary copies of it in Cave 4, uh, which was kind of like a huge uh, repository of uh, documents. And we found many different versions. So we know we have the, the, the uh, right one. Before I go up to the make a way in the wilderness, which is the, which is the crucial passage of this document, which is the focal point upon which this document turns. And it's so familiar to our uh, believers and viewers because they all know this passage because it's the passage the Gospels apply to the mission of John the Baptist in the wilderness. This group is applying it to themselves. Now, I just want to give you some of the tenor of this a document. I want to run through it a little 